What's going on guys? Welcome back to another episode of Slime Quest TV. I've had a couple requests. I know, just the overlook of my boat and what I got going on this boat. I got a lot of different stuff. I run a lot of tournaments. I do a lot of fishing and I've kind of dialed in a pretty good boat presentation to have the most out there in the water. So I'm going to jump in this boat and dive into exactly how I got my boat laid out. And uh, this boat right here is just a 17 and a half foot Crestliner Fishhawk uh, side council. Great boat, really light to tow. They're not super expensive and it handles some really big water. I've had this boat on all the Great Lakes, small inland lakes, small rivers, doesn't draft in a lot of water. You can get up into about a foot and a half of water with this thing with the motor trimmed up. So it's a really good all round boat. Am I gonna get a bigger boat? Probably. Uh, probably in the next couple years I will have a lot you know, nicer and bigger boat, but this has just been a great boat for me. And uh, I'm gonna go over some of the stuff I have on this boat to make a better uh, fishing boat. So stick with us. All right guys, the first thing I wanna talk about is the trolling motor. This is a Minn Kota Trova 80 pound thrust 24 volt system. It's actually got two batteries. This thing will last all day. We've cast it on tournaments, musky fishing, and doing different things with this trolling motor, and it lasts all day. Uh, it has a foot pedal, which has a long cord. I can bring it all the way to the back for when I'm actually fishing off the rear of the boat. And it has a remote that you could have on your pot, you know, on your belt loop, and control this from just uh, when you're not really having to turn a lot. This thing has it's an iPilot system. It's not the iPilot link, but it's the iPilot. It has anchor lock. You can run tracks with it. It just won't follow contours like some of the newer ones. This is a few years old. Some of the newer ones, iPilot link, will actually follow contours from your hummingbirds. And uh, that's really cool. But this is the, the workhorse of the boat when we're casting off the boat. Great motor, trolling motor. We're going to start from the front and we're going to work our way back. Inside this little box right here is this is what you really want to have so you can be effective on charging your batteries very easily You get a light on here. This is actually a Compartment where I have my Minn Kota three bank charger. This charges all my batteries You can see they're all charged up. This will charge my starting battery and both my 24 volt system both my batteries on that 24 volt system um, I got a plug right over here. I just plug one plug into a outlet and I'm actually charging all three batteries and it's going to charge them in about three hours. Very good unit. I'm super happy with it. And also something I've been running the last couple years is this PDFs with the CO2 that are in there. They inflate upon water and it just saves a lot of room rather than having regular life jackets. They are kind of expensive. But it's something really nice to have. They save a lot of room. I got a bunch of them in there. They're kind of tucked away. When we're running tournaments, we're made. To, we have to wear those all the time, and uh, just saves a lot of room. And they're a lot more. You know, they look a lot better and they're a lot lighter when you're having to. You know, use them running around with the boat. We're gonna keep working our way back. I actually got a live well back here. They've actually changed over. Which is something really cool, guys, that I've done is I don't I don't keep a lot of fish and I've actually changed this live well into a bait storage system. You can see right here, I've actually taken some plastic from some of my boxes, and I actually have a lot of my a lot of my baits that I run all the time right here. I got all the all the drain plugs plugged off and uh, lots of great storage instead of having a lot of boxes on the boat. Hang my baits right in there to keep dry and uh, stop, you know, keep the hooks from rusting, all that kind of stuff. Never have to worry about them. Alright guys, I got a little little tool holder right here. I got a couple tools that I use all the time. Got a pair of long needle nose for unhooking muskies, other fish. And uh, also a file for sharpening up hooks. Got to keep those hooks sharp. And then a pair of split ring pliers. Those are probably the three tools I use the most. Down underneath I have another toolbox down here that has a lot more other tools and uh, it's nice to have some tools in the boat in case you know you're working on a fish trying to get them unhooked and uh, or just for just working on the boat you know I got screwdrivers in there some pliers and just other stuff like that bolt cutters and uh, now that we're here sitting at the council I'm gonna talk to you a little bit about these hummingbirds I got two hummingbirds at the council I actually got a hummingbird helix 9 G2N side imaging unit I run this full screen side imaging all the time guys 
The reason I run a full screen side imaging is so I can get a better, clearer picture and be able to see a lot better on that full screen instead of splitting your screen in half. This other one is a Helix 9 Generation 1, which I use as side imaging also, but I use it just for mapping. It's an older unit. I got a new one, put this one on the side, and actually just run this on mapping all the time for when I'm trolling. A lot of you guys know I troll a lot, and uh, I keep this on a full screen mapping just so I can stay on those waypoints and stuff that much easier. Um, down here, this is a Troll Master. We'll actually talk about this more in a minute. I got a kicker motor, a Mercury 99 kicker in the back, but this Troll Master actually has a dial on there. I could actually adjust my throttle right here from the console, and I can adjust them in, in the increments of 0.1 mile per hour. It has a 100 degree dial, and it is dead on. I mean, I could I could change speeds very easily. I get a fish on while I'm trolling. I could hit that idle button. The boat will idle. We could reel it in. And then I could actually hit the idle button again. And it goes to the exact speed I was at before. So there's no forgetting what speed you're at when you got that fish. It automatically goes right back to that speed that you had. So it's really cool, guys. We're going to keep working our way back here and uh, talk more about this boat. As you guys can see back here, let me turn this light a little bit around. I have down east rod holders and, and Fat AZ Musky Products um, holders. These can be turned either way, so I can have them running off the side of the boat. I can run rods straight down. This is on a, a two and a half inch track or a three inch track system. Fits perfectly on the gunnel of this Crestlander boat. Fat AZ Musky Products make some of the best rod holders and stuff mounts around. On this side, I have the same setup. Rod holders in the track. I also have a Humminbird Helix 7 G3N, and I actually have all these units networked, which I will show you right now. One second. Down here, I have my networking hub for the Humminbird Helix units. I got all three units, you can see, all three units there on the left, networked together, they're all hooked together, they all work hand in hand with each other. So this Humminbird Helix 7 is my unit that I run. I could use mapping. I could use mapping when I'm casting from the back, whether I got friends on the front fishing, I like to get them up front have the first opportunity at the fish when we're casting, moving along the shoreline. Um, it's a great unit, Helix 7. I can see it perfectly well from standing up, having it right here in the back of the boat. This rod holder right here, it's a Project X, also by Fat AZ, the same people that make these rod holder mounts, and this track. This actually jerks the rod while we're trolling in intervals from 3 seconds to 17 seconds, depending on that dial. Really cool. I've got a lot of fish on this. They're, you know, they're not super cheap, but this thing outfishes all the other rods on the boat all the time. Back here in the back, I got a 9.9 kicker. This is a, I don't know, 2014 kicker. Very good unit. Super quiet when you're trolling. I mean, I can troll down to a half mile an hour, all the way up to a five, six, seven mile an hour. So it's a great unit. Like I said, I got that Troll Master hooked up to it, so all I got to do when I'm out there trolling, I take this right here, just pop it in gear, flip the handle up, turn on that Troll Master, and I can start adjusting my throttle from there from the dash. There's one more thing I want to talk about, guys, and, uh, you know, I hope I'm not really forgetting a whole lot of stuff, and if there is, comment down below, guys, but inside this box right here is where I have my starting battery for all my electronics. And there's something cool in here that I just did this last year and it's installing these mounts for all my wires. You got a hard mount right here and I actually got five different accessory holders right here for all the power and the ground right here. I'll link that in the description down below. It was about 25, 30 bucks, but it's way better than having all those five, six, seven wires stacked on top of each other on one terminal. A lot better connection for everything. My humming birds don't shut down when I'm powering a boat on and off. 
which a lot of people have problems with. It eliminated that and it's a great feature. So that is the little tour of my boat. I hope you guys enjoyed. I know this isn't a video for everybody, all my subscribers out there, but I have had quite a few requests over the years just to go over the layout of my boat. And I hope you guys appreciate it. And thank you guys for watching. Tune in next week for another episode of Slime Quest TV. Thank you guys. Please like and subscribe.